welcome back today uh, we are going to learn how to estimate the dew point and bubble point temperatures and pressures this dew point and bubble point we covered in the last lecture so today we shall see how to estimate these values so in this lecture we shall be learning first the vapor pressure calculation because vapor pressure is one which is needed in the calculation of the dew point and bubble point temperature or pressure then we shall go to dew point calculation and then bubble point calculation first the vapor pressure estimation there are many many correlations which have been developed to estimate the vapor pressure and these correlations are based on experimental data one of the most popular vapor pressure correlation is antoine equation this antoine equation is also used to estimate the vapor pressure for the components in the natural gas the equation has this form on the left hand side we have the logarithmic of the saturated pressure or the vapor pressure of a liquid on the right hand side we have three parameters a b and c which are specific to a given component and here we have t that is the temperature as we learnt earlier that the vapor pressure is a function of the temperature and is specific to a given component now at below we have showing the reference uh, which may be referred to to get the values of a b and c please note that whenever you are using a correlation you should be aware of the units being used in the particular correlation and this antoine equation and its parameter values have been reported in various literature and sometimes you may find that it is coming in terms of no natural logarithm and sometimes you can find this logarithm is base 10 next we come to gibbs phase rule now this phase rule is a subset of the degrees of freedom and by degrees of freedom we mean that the minimum number of properties that must be prescribed to describe a given system and why this is necessary this is because any system has many many properties with which it may be characterized however for practical purposes it is not possible to prescribe the values of all the various properties so it is necessary for us to know what would be the minimum number of properties that must be pres prescribed to define the particular system and gibbs phase rule is a special case which is used to find the degrees of freedom in terms of intensive properties of a system here let me mention that intensive properties are those properties of a system which do not depend on the mass of the system for example density viscosity uh, thermal conductivity etc in this regard the masses of the phases are not phase rule properties because it gives only the intensive property now gibbs phase rule is applicable only when the system is at equilibrium we shall learn about equilibrium in our later lecture now gibbs phase rule states that the number of degrees of freedom f is equal to 2 minus pi plus c in this the pi is the number of phases and c is the number of components this particular equation can be derived from basic considerations of the degrees of freedom calculation the derivation has not been given in this but it can be found in any standard thermodynamic book now let us apply the degrees of freedom to a vapor liquid system 
and this we have shown here in this figure. In this figure, what it shows that there is a particular system that is a closed system. A closed system is one in which there is mass, no mass transfer possible between the system and the surroundings, but the possibility of energy between system and its surroundings is permissible. So, in this closed system, we have a vapor phase and a liquid phase which are in equilibrium and this whole system is characterized by a single pressure and temperature because this is at equilibrium. So, when I say equilibrium, it means thermal equilibrium, mechanical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium. So, when the system is at thermal and mechanical equilibrium, there is a single pressure and a single temperature. So, let us assume that there are C components. Now, these C components, now we can say that if we designate by x the composition or the concentration of each of the components, then we have C number of x variables like x1, x2, x3 like that. Then if y denotes the composition in the vapor phase, then for C components, we have C number of concentrations. This concentration may be in terms of mass fraction, may be in terms of mole fraction or some similar to those units. And then we have one pressure as 1 and one temperature as T. So, now if I count these variables, I will have 2C plus 2 variables. There are 2 C plus 2 variables. Now, number of phases is 2. Now, if I uh, apply the Gibbs phase rule, we find that F is equal to C minus 2 plus 2. This 2 comes for the number of phases. And so, we find that the degrees of freedom in this case is C. What it means? It means that to characterize this vapor liquid system with C number of components at equilibrium, we need to specify C number of intensive variables. And in this particular table, we have only written the intensive variable. Now, let us see what are the various possible combinations of these variables which can give me the C degrees of freedom. Now, first here we find we can prescribe either pressure or temperature and C minus 1 concentrations. Okay? So, P or temperature, temperature T and X i and i goes from 1 to C minus 1. Similarly, I can also prescribe pressure or temperature along with Y i where i goes from 1 to C. Now, here we see that depending on the type of prescriptions we make, we have different types of calculations. So, in this first we shall see that we have pressure and the C minus 1 concentrations in the liquid phase. So, what we remain to be found out is the temperature and the C number of the vapor phase concentrations. Now, because we know in this case we know the liquid phase composition and liquid can only give rise to a vapor. So, we call this as bubble point temperature calculation because we have to find out the temperature. Similarly, we can also prescribe the pressure and the vapor phase concentrations of C minus 1 components. In this case, what we find that we have to find out the temperature and the liquid phase composition. Now, since we are going to find out the temperature and since we have the vapor phase concent uh, concentrations prescribed, so a vapor can give rise to the liquid. So, a vapor going to liquid, it happens at dew point. So, that, that is called dew point temperature calculation. In similar manner, if we are prescribing the temperature 
and the liquid phase composition for the C minus 1 components, then we have to find out the pressure and the vapor phase composition. Because we are going to find the pressure and because the liquid can again give rise to the vapor, we call it bubble point pressure calculation. And the last combination is that we are prescribing the temperature and the vapor phase composition from which we have to find out the pressure and the liquid phase composition and this we call it dew point pressure calculation. So, these are generally the type of calculations we need to do for a vapor liquid system at equilibrium and as we know once we know the pressure and temperature and the composition we fi can find out all other properties that means with these prescriptions we are able to characterize a system completely. Now, let us go to the bubble point calculation. In the bubble point calculation, I said that we are talking about the how a liquid will form a bubble and at what temperature or pressure it will form the bubble. So, it means that Xi's are given and we do not know Yi. So, what we are doing? We are using the summation of Yi. Summation of Yi means summation of the mole fractions in the vapor phase and summation of the mole fractions always is 1. So, we are writing summation Yi and here we are using the equilibrium relationship. Equilibrium relationship is Yi is equal to Ki Xi. So, Yi equal to Ki Xi we are putting here and we are getting it 1. Now, there are many ways of finding out this Xi. So, uh, this Ki, sorry. So, one of the ways is by Raoult's law about which we shall learn later and if from Raoult's law we find that Ki is equal to Pi set by P and if I write Raoult's law says that Ki is equal to P i set by P. So, if I put this expression in this equation, then we can get this particular equation. So, on the left hand side, we have P i set which is a function of temperature and this is the given mole fractions in the liquid phase and we have on the right hand side the pressure and this summation is being done for all the C number of components. So, we see that we know the C minus 1 x i from that we can find out the C th x i. C th x i is 1 minus x i this x c we can say x c is equal to 1 minus x i or rather I put x j, j equal to 1 to c minus 1. So, that is how we can find the uh, mole fraction of the c th component. Now, once we know this all the composition in the liquid phase and P or T we can determine the Y i and T or P. That means, T or P means if I know P I will find T, if I know uh, T I will find P. So, this is the uh, general bubble point calculation principle. Now, after knowing this bubble point calculation principle, we go to bubble point temperature calculation. In this, the specified variables are pressure and the liquid phase composition. And from this, what we do? We have to initialize temperature, that is the unknown variable. We have to understand that how, how to initialize the temperature. Temperature may be initialized by choosing any arbitrary value, but to if I choose an arbitrary value, it may so happen that 
in the numerical technique which we are going to use to find out this bubble point temperature may diverge. So, many of the numerical techniques depend on the initial value we choose to find out the solution. So, to avoid any kind of divergence of the solution, what we do? We use some physical understanding. It is known that the temperature, the dew point temperature and the bubble point temperature will always lie between the maximum and minimum boiling points of the components in the given system. So, we need to know the boiling points of each of the components in the system and this we represent by T sat. So, if for all the components we find the T sat and choose the minimum T sat and the maximum T sat and we choose the initial temperature some value within this particular range. Now, one way of initializing this temperature is that we take some kind of an average of all the boiling points and this average may be that we take a weighted average, the weightage factor being the mole fraction of all the components. So, this may be one starting point to initialize T to do the bubble point temperature calculation. Now, once we have initialized temperature and with the knowledge of pressure and x i and y i k, we can find out the value of the k i. k i is the equilibrium constant about which we shall know in a separate lecture. So, for the time being we understand that we know the k i value in, in terms of pressure, some assumed temperature x i is known and y i is some again intermediate mole fraction of the vapor component, vaporized components. And this k as the superscript represents the kth iteration. Because we are doing a numerical technique, it will be an iterative process. Now, after finding this k and again we go back to this finding the value of this x i and k i. From the previous thing, we find that this, this equation must be satisfied. This particular equation must be satisfied. So, once we find the values of the k i, the, we plug in the values of k i and the x i and see that check whether this is going to be equal to 1 or not. So, this will tell if our chosen temperature is the correct temperature, then it will certainly be 1. If it is not 1, that means the chosen temperature is not the right temperature and we have to do the iteration to get the right value. So, for this what we do that we now go for iteration and these iterations are carried out in the way that this particular value is this absolute value of this particular thing absolute of this should be less than or equal to some user defined convergence criterion. So, depending on the accuracy we need, we will choose the value of this epsilon and we will try to see that this particular thing comes down or becomes equal to the prescribed convergence criterion. If we find that it is not converging, then we have to update this temperature by some suitable numerical method about which again we shall be talking later. Now, how do we know that to choose the next temperature? So, there are some simple criterion criteria. First criterion is this that if this particular summation 
minus 1 comes more than 0. If this comes more than 0, then T is more than the bubble point temperature. So, it has to be reduced. On the other hand, if this is less than 0, the assumed T is less than the bubble point temperature and hence it has to be increased. So, this way by slightly changing this value of this temperature, we will find that we are able to reach the converse value of T after a few iterations. Similarly, if I go to the bubble point pressure calculation, we will find that in this case the specified variables are T and Xi. We have to initialize P and in this case we have to remember that the pressure will lie between the vapor pressure, the minimum vapor pressure and the maximum vapor pressure of all the components. So, we need to find out the vapor pressure from the given T for all the components and the actual pressure, bubble point pressure will be lying between these two maximum and minimum vapor pressures. That is why it is important for us to know the vapor pressure of the components. It may be to, uh, prescribed here that the Antoine equation may also be used to find out the T set in the sense that uh, for a given pressure, the temperature obtained is the boiling point temperature. Similarly, for the given temperature, the pressure obtained is the vapor pressure. So, if I want to know the pressure, I can prescribe give the temperature on the right hand side of Antoine equation and find out the pressure from the left hand side. Okay? So, that equation is for vapor pressure calculation and similarly under the bubble point temperature calculation, I prescribe the pressure value and uh, corresponding to that, I find the temperature value for the given component that is the T set of the particular component. As we did for earlier for the bubble point temperature calculation, again we have be having, we will be having this equation and if our pressure is chosen is correct, then we shall be reaching convergence, otherwise we have to repeat the iterations. Similar to that, I am not uh, detailing it here, this is similar to that, we are also having the K values and from the K values, we shall be finding the this particular summation and we shall try to see that uh, this summation, uh, this uh, absolute value is falling within some convergence limit and then we can keep on iterating it till we get the convergence. So, similar to the uh, temperature, we can go on adjusting the pressure depending on this particular criterion. Next, we go to the dew point calculation. In this case, we are given the vapor phase composition. So, what we are doing? We are adjusting, we are rewriting this x which have to be found out. We are writing this x in terms of y i and here we are writing this equal to 1. So, with this equilibrium relationship, what we are doing now? We are substituting for k i p i set by p and if I readjust this equation, I find that we are getting y i by p i set as a function of temperature is equal to 1 by p. So, this is the governing equation to find out the dew point, dew point pressure or dew point temperature. Now, first coming to dew point temperature calculation, here the specified variables are pressure and y i. With this Again, we have to initialize T as before and we can initialize T as earlier by choosing some value between the T set minimum and T set maximum. And we can apply the same principle to find out the initial value of T and same way we are finding Ki and after finding the Ki, we find this value. Just note the change on the expression for this. So, we find this value and check that whether this this absolute value is within the convergence criterion or not. After doing this, what we do that we now go on iterating it till we go with convergence and for updating the value of t, we use the same judgment as before this I am not describing. And we shall do some example problems later to demonstrate how to carry out this dew point and bubble point calculations. 
Now, here we come to dew point pressure calculation. In this case, temperature and the vapor phase compositions are specified and again here we have to initialize the pressure and we initialize pressure like this as before and we find the overall pressure like this, find the value of Ki and do the iterations, again check for the convergence of the absolute value of this particular expression and if not, we are going to again update the value of the pressure and after a few iterations, we will find that we shall be getting the converged value of the pressure. So, this is the way we are going to find out the dew point temperature, dew point pressure, bubble point temperature, bubble point pressure. As I was telling you, we are going to use some numerical techniques and these numerical techniques pertain to solution of equations for finding the roots of equation, roots of nonlinear algebraic equation. So, I have just listed a few of the methods which are used like bisection method, regular fallacy method and Newton Raphson method. There may be many other methods which are given in some standard numerical many, uh, methods textbook. And these materials you may study further from the three books I have prescribed here. These first two books will give you the principles and the calculations and the third book this by Reed Prosnitz and this Paul Reed, these are very, this is a very good resource book to find out the various properties of the gases and liquids. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. Thank you.